A very good afternoon and welcome to HYCM's live trading workshop with myself, Giles Cochran, Chief Currency Analyst. Uh, very good to have you here. I'm glad you could uh, make it along. Just want to uh, run through uh, with you what we've been looking at this week. But before we get going, just to remind ourselves that as we talk about different entries, exits, different instruments to trade, the whole uh, fundamental uh, background to this workshop is to help people understand how to make professional trading decisions. Now, the idea is you look over my shoulder, someone with a professional trading background, you see how I go about making decisions and that should inform and help you as you make your decisions going forward. So it's not a signal trading service, it's an educational providing service, just to make that clear uh, from the outset. Uh, one of the key principles in trading, particularly with uh, currency trading, is understanding um exactly uh, how to pair strength against weakness whenever we're currency trading we always want to pair a strong currency against a weak currency and in this workshop i'm going to demonstrate how that's done i'm going to show you how to analyze markets so you can uh, find out a strong currency against a weak currency i'll, I'll point out uh, a couple of currency pairs today and uh, that will help uh, you in your trading so you will be able to uh, start to begin to recognize them for yourself and that's the key to successful macro trading recognizing the probability of currency direction now these days there's, there's more chop there's more movement but fundamentally uh, currencies do end up uh, where the fundamentals uh, dictate they end up so there is a art and a skill to currency trading and this simple concept is what underpins my whole philosophy and it's not just my philosophy it's the philosophy of the vast majority of professional currency traders just as you expect a strong arm to beat a comparatively weaker arm in the same way we look to back a strong currency against a weak currency now given the fact that i'm just back uh, from holiday i thought this would be a good time to refresh uh, traders this very simple uh, analysis that's necessary for uh, into market analysis at the moment we're seeing a lot of chop in markets and one of the first things uh, that i do every time i come to my uh, desk each morning is i want to find out what is the market's appetite towards risk now the reason that's important is because certain currencies are either strong or weak depending on the overall market's um, relationship to risk on any given day. So what we're looking at, we look at equities, currency markets, commodity markets, government bonds, and volatility. So with the equities, equity traders are very sensitive to risk. If they feel worried or nervous about the state of a domestic economy or the global economy, equity traders uh, tend to sell off the large indices, so the FTSE 100, S&P 500, et cetera, et cetera, they do tend to sell off when equity traders are risk averse, fearful. So it could be some, you know, a slowdown in China's um, production. It could be a, a breakdown in the relationship between China and the US. It could be uh, some very bad news for the Eurozone. It tends to be something that's global and gripping that, uh, gr that, uh, that sort of, moves equity markets um, now currencies now these are divided quite nicely there's certain currencies that gain when investors are worried and the investors the currencies that gain where investors are worried swiss franc japanese yen, and the us dollar sometimes okay now the go-to uh, risk off currency when m markets are worried is the yen and the swiss franc and sometimes the US dollar also operates as a safe haven. If you look at back at the financial crisis and the COVID-19 crisis, you see sudden bids came into the dollar. The dollar is the world's most traded currency. 70% of all currency transactions involve the, the dollar. The US dollar is the world's reserve currency. In other words, central banks preferred currency to hold in reserves is the US dollar. It's global. It's recognized throughout the world. It is the currency that you want in times of a crisis because 
it's going to flow th freely and people are confident that they can trade, exchange, uh, find value in US dollars. So that's why the US dollar sometimes operates as a safe haven currency alongside the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. Now, the high beta currencies, Aussie, New Zealand dollar, CAD, these are the so-called commodity currencies. Their currencies are often tied into commodities. Australian dollar tied into iron ore prices, copper prices, gold prices. Canadian dollar is tied into oil prices. New Zealand dollar tied into dairy prices and, and broadly in commodities generally. So when commodities are doing well, you tend to see the commodity-based currencies or the high beta currencies, Aussie, New Zealand dollar, CAD doing well too. Uh, commodities, when markets are feeling risk adverse and worried, commodities tend to, tend to sell off. Things like copper, iron ore, they, they uh, fall lower because market in, in, uh, sentiment is not towards growth. Uh, copper's nickname is Dr. Copper. So when people are feeling optimistic about the state of the world's economy, uh, copper prices rise, it's in demand. Why? Copper's used in wiring, building, you know, electric vehicles now. And copper, generally speaking, is the commodity that indicates the overall assessment of global economic health. Oil as well is obviously um, a commodity in a risk off environment, oil tends to fall. But also remember these individual commodities have their own individual supply and demand factors. So at the moment with oil, there's a hurricane approaching the Gulf of Mexico, oil prices are moving higher, even though risk sentiment is generally negative, we are seeing risk sentiment moving lower. Now government bonds, uh, US treasury bonds, um, are considered one of the safest assets. So US bond prices tend to go down during risk on tones, that's when yields are going up, uh, and the opposite is true during risk off flows. So when markets are risk averse, bond yields go down, and volatility goes up when markets are feeling worried. So that is a quick rundown on how to do intermarket analysis. And these are the uh, outlooks here on the right. I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna go through that now quickly uh, with your with yourself so you can see how to look at the risk tone so we'll just quickly go along okay so we'll start so first of all we're looking at the dollar you can see the dollar is a little bit weaker on the day uh dollar's pretty uh, flat and uh, the majors are generally quite flat at the moment we've been seeing chopping markets recently so there's not a lot to glean from that Looking at gold prices, you can see gold prices have moved, been moving a little bit higher. Oil complex moving higher, higher. That's after there was a draw in the private inventory levels last night. And Hurricane Nicholas is approaching the Gulf of Mexico. There's been a considerable amount of oil uh, supply that's been offline due to that. So that's been supportive oil prices in the near term. Copper prices, you can see slightly lower on the day. And if you just, sorry, look, look at that on, on the week rather, on the day, we can see that copper prices are slightly higher on the day, in fact, but still within recent ranges. Uh, so a mixed picture in commodities, iron ore continues uh, to move uh, lower on the session. Looking at bonds, we can see that bond yields have been largely pressured to the downside. Yields in bonds going down means that investors are buying bonds. So that is a risk off environment. Looking at equity markets, we can see that equity markets are broadly pressured to the downside. Volatility is trending higher. So it's a more negative leaning risk off sentiment leaning uh, from the equity futures markets. And now we're going to look at uh, the commodity, but we'll look at some currencies. And here we can see the commodity based currencies are mixed. Aussie CAD, New Zealand dollar, mixed. New Zealand dollar slightly weaker. Aussie slightly weaker on the risk off tones. CAD, of course, showing some strength in sympathy with the rising oil prices. We're also seeing some bids into the risk off currencies, the yen, the Swiss franc, and a mixed picture in the US dollar. So, how would we analyze these markets? Well, these, these markets are clearly in a very mixed risk sentiment. And that mixed risk sentiment means it's pretty tricky for trading right now. There's a lot of chop. Now, we're just going to analyze uh, some of the, 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 the latest market moves. So yesterday, we had the US CPI data print. Now, that US CPI data print resulted in immediate dollar selling. 
Now, CPI is US inflation. Many central banks around the world are fearing inflation. If inflation rises too quickly and too fast, central banks will have no choice other than to raise interest rates. So what that means is investors have been wondering whether central bankers are going to respond to rising inflation by raising interest rates. Yesterday, the CPI data came out from the US and it was a miss. So in other words, inflation pressure is off. So we saw the US dollar move lower, we also saw US 10-year yields move lower, which is what we'd expect. What was slightly unexpected was the dollar strength that came into the market immediately afterwards. Now, that was on the risk off trading. Remember, I showed to you that sometimes the US dollar can operate as a safe haven alongside the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. Watch out for that to return today. OK, we may see some uh, returns to that dollar uh, strength. Uh, and particularly, look at the equity, mar equity futures markets when the US cash opens. So in about one hour's time, as the US market really gets going, uh, we'll see what happens. So just don't be surprised if we see a little bit of upside again come into that dollar. And there's two forces at work here on the dollar. One, the CPI data was amiss, so the dollar can sell off. But two, the worries about the risk sentiment means that the US dollar can also increase. Now, overnight, we saw Asian equity markets trend lower. Chinese industrial production, Chinese retail sales, all missed on their data points. So the sentiment is sort of more negative heading into European session. We've been leaning risk off all day. We're now gonna head into the US session. There's not a lot of great positive sentiment around. So in the balance of probabilities, we would expect to see further risk off trading intraday today. Now, the good news for that for us is it may mean some medium term opportunities become available. Let me show you something here in the S&P 500. Do you see these highlighted areas in the S&P 500? In this box in May, this box in June, this box in July, this box in August. These periods of time have always been around the third Friday of the month. Now, the third Friday of the month is a key option expiry date. It's called the OPEX expiry levels. And we've been seeing over the last four months that equity markets have moved lower into the OPEX expiry and then they have risen higher on the Friday or into next week. So just watch out for the same dynamic playing out. Now, this is a key support area. You can see in the S&P 500 that price is in that support area, so that would be suitable for buying. But remember, there's a lot of uncertainty around the markets now. The reason I'm not buying into this today is because there's a miss in Chinese industrial production. There's a miss in Chinese retail sales. There's concerns about slowing growth in China. There's concerns about rising COVID-19 cases uh, around the world. There's concerns about you know, falling iron ore prices. There's concerns about the US-China relationship, how China is going to be uh, relating to its own companies and how companies within China are going to be regulated or not regulated by central government, et cetera, et cetera. That wall of worry is what's saying, I'd just rather hold fire. Uh, and wait before entering markets. You look at the S&P 500 and look at this rip high it's been on. This can't go on forever. You know, markets don't keep going up and up and up. There is a correction or a pullback. And many analysts are expecting a five to 10% correction. So a 10% correction in the S&P 500, for instance, would be a fall down to 4,100 or 4,000. So any falls down to that level do, does look suitable for buying. Um, but near-term buying is appropriate now. The broad fundamental picture is, you know, we've got low interest rates, we've got uh, central uh, governments providing fiscal support. There's no fundamental reason why that would be a bad idea to go long. And if you were desperate to go long, long at market stops below 4390 would make sense from a short-term technical um, perspective. So if you know, this negative sentiment accelerates into the US session. There's a couple of things that are worth looking at. So first thing that's worth looking at is a couple of currency pairs. Now, these currency pairs, the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc and the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen, both look ideal for buying at the moment. And let me run that through with you. 
the New Zealand dollar is probably the most bullish currency out there at the moment. The RBNZ has projected one interest rate hike this year and four next year. Later on this, after, this evening, we have the GDP data due from New Zealand, and it's expected to be one of the highest readings since 1987. So there is an anticipation that the New Zealand dollar could or should keep rallying higher. So that means any pullbacks in the New Zealand dollar to Swiss franc pair to this 0.6480, 0.6460 region can be considered suitable for going long. Similarly, any pullbacks to this 77 region in the New Zealand or Japanese yen pair can be suitable for going long. We would favour moves higher up towards 79.50 and beyond. So the New Zealand dollar does look set to gain. Now, if you compare that to the Japanese yen, the Bank of Japan is uh, set on keeping interest rates at their current levels indefinitely. The RBNZ wants to raise interest rates by you know, five times between now and next year. So which currency would you expect to appreciate? The New Zealand dollar and you expect the Japanese yen to stay weaker. But as if you've been canny and following this, isn't the Japanese yen, isn't, isn't the Swiss franc stand to gain on risk off markets? Yes. So that's why the risk off sentiment has just been pulling the yen higher, pulling the Swiss franc higher. And that's why New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen have been moving uh, lower. However, medium term, we do favour buyers. So that's why a pullback into that region offers an opportunity to get in at a better price. So uh, they're the two currency pairs that are worth uh, looking at. Now, in, in terms of short term trading opportunities, there's a couple of things for us to look at. Uh, first of all, we want to look at the US dollar CAD. Now, let's just see what time the Canadian um gdp right that's already out the canadian cpi data is already out let's just have a quick look at that and see if there's any trading opportunities from that just have a little look here just see that print should have just come out a little bit of a way ago okay so here we go month on um Year on year came at 4.1, a bit hotter. Month on month came in at 0.2, previous 0.6, uh, month on month 0.3. So a mixed picture in the CPI print, uh, a little bit higher on the trim, a little bit higher on the year on year. So really not much going on there at the moment. So there's a bit of a limited reaction in the US dollar CAD pair. You can see that. So a little bit of a bid into the Canadian dollar, but you know not very much at all. That sort of retrace. So there's nothing really massively uh, significant there. Seeing some bids coming into the dollar index, uh, which was something we were sort of flagging as a potential thing to watch out for. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. Those bids coming into the dollar index right now. So the CPI. I'll just explain the context of this. Uh, Canadian inflation. Alongside inflation with the UK, the US, uh, central bankers fear rising inflation. And if inflation rises too high, then you will, you will see uh, expectations for raising interest rates. Most central banks think that inflation will be transitory, in other words, temporary. So that's why even if we do get the high inflation, it's not, it's not necessarily going to result in a huge uh, surge higher in a currency. So you just got to bear that in mind. Um, but it doesn't harm a currency. So we had strong CPI data out of the UK this morning, which doesn't hurt the outlook for the pound medium term. Now, heading into the weekly crude stocks, this is interesting. The private draw last night came in at minus 5.4 million. So that means that the draw that's expected now should be adjusted. So it's minus 3.54 expected, but actually, the private draw becomes the expectations. So if the private draw is minus 5.4 million barrels, um, to see oil move higher, we want to see a greater draw than minus 5.4 million. So if the draw is like minus six or seven or eight million, then we could see another short term pop higher in oil. 
okay? So do watch out for that. There's a potential for a, a, short, a short term pop higher in oil. Um, and that could result in a little, you know, that wouldn't be a trade to keep hold of, but it could be a trade that sort of runs for sort of 30, 40 points. So very strong uh, draw in inventory levels, expect to see oil moving a bit higher. I'm not chasing this move higher in oil, just simply because I don't see this, uh, uh, I don't see obvious fundamental reasons for this to keep moving higher and higher. As soon as the hurricane recedes, then production should come back online and I'll expect at some point this correct. Now, obviously um, uh, it could keep moving higher, but the IEA have uh, revised down their production expectation, their consumption expectations for oil this year, so they did raise it for next. So it's a mixed picture, I'll, I'll, I'll grant folks that, but it's not screaming by to me. Um, but a, you know, a big draw on the inventory levels, you know, minus seven, minus eight million, you know, you could see a, a surge higher up to 76, for instance, for some intraday, intraday work. So that's worth being aware of. The other key event that we're coming up is New Zealand GDP. Now look here, the second quarter is due to come in at 16.3% year on year. So it's fantastic, right? Uh, that's one of the biggest uh, readings grow, of growth since 1987, I think. So, you know, the thing to look here for the New Zealand uh, dollar is if the New Zealand dollar, um, say this comes in very high, above expectations, above 17.3, above 1.8 for the, the quarter readings, um, then expect the New Zealand dollar to keep moving higher. Now, it could be capped if the sentiment is still risk off. So if the sentiment still is, if the sentiment is still risk off, then consider selling Aussie New Zealand dollar. If sentiment goes risk on, then it's buying New Zealand dollar yen, New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. Um, now, if the GDP comes in weak, say it comes in like quite low, then I think that offers good opportunities to enter New Zealand dollar Japanese yen and New, New Zealand dollar Swiss franc from a medium term perspective. So, you know, a significant miss then I would expect to find buyers of that 0.6450 and that 77 region on the, on the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc, New Zealand dollar Japanese yen. You can just define and limit your risk the other side of that trend line. So for here, you know, I would just very simply, um, you know, let's, in fact, let me show you on, I'll show you on this, I'll show you on this chart here. So Aussie, New Zealand dollar, if there's a retracement, and I, I think it's suitable to sell from 1.0400, just stops running above that 1.0500 level. New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, what I'd be looking at here is like, on a daily basis, you know, any retracements back down to this 100 exponential moving average would be great. Looking at going uh, long from there, slightly higher, just about that 77 region would be ideal. Um, you can use the 100, 200 exponential average to define a limit risk. Similarly with the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. Just any retracements back down to that 0.6450. So anything here would be just ideal for the pair. And stocks can be run really, really tight here. You know, you can run, let me just get rid of that, get rid of that. Right, stops can be run just below the 200 exponential moving average. So potentially entering here, looking for a move up to 0.6700 and, and beyond is a really good high risk, low reward uh, scenario. So if there is a miss in the GDP data, any entry around here would make sense from a medium term perspective. Okay, folks, uh, that's uh, the main issues that we've looked at. A couple of things to say. I am due in Dubai, coming back, coming back to Dubai, 27th of September, through to uh, sort of second uh, of October. So I'm looking forward to speaking at the Forex Expo there. So if you are based in Dubai, please do stop in, say hello. I'm on stand 22. Great to see some of uh, the regulars uh, uh, pop in. Um, and uh, don't forget the live market analysis on Mondays. I'm back at work and back in full swing of things. So. Uh, normal uh, work patterns are uh, in action. So please do um, come along to that live market analysis. We'll be looking, getting ready for the FRMC event next 
week. It's going to be a big one uh, and being prepared for that uh, can pay dividends. So don't miss Monday's webinar as well as Wednesday's webinar. We'll get ourselves well tuned in uh, to what's going on. Okay, thank you all very much. It's been great to have you here. I hope you have a very good week and I look forward to seeing some folks on Monday. Take care. Thank you now. Goodbye.